So we count in base 10, right? Like we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then we take 1 and start over with 10, 11, 12, and so on. Now we're pretty used to base 10, also known as the decimal system. I mean, we use it every day. But what if I told you that there was a better way to count? In fact, much better. Allow me to introduce you to the beauty that is the dozenal system, which is base 12. Okay, let's write it out. So you start out the same, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then instead of writing 1, 0 as 10, we have two new symbols. We have dec, which has the value of 10, and l, the value of 11. And then we carry the 1 over to write 1, 0, do, or a dozen, or 12 in decimal. And then we keep going. We have 1, do, 1, 1, do, 2, 1, do, 3, all the way up to 2, do, 3, do, 4, do, 5, do, and then all the way up to L, do, 9, L, do, dec, L, do, L, and then we get a gross, or grow, or 12 twelves. In decimal, this equals 144. Okay, so why is base 12 even useful? Why did I make this video? Well, let's start out first by saying that this does not affect serious mathematics at all. Like, pi is still pi. In dozenal, you write it differently, but it still does the same thing as pi in decimal. So what is dozenal good at? Well, everyday math, and oh man is it good. Let's start by looking at the factors of 10. We have 1, of course, 2, 5, and then 10. But let's look at the factors of 12. We have 1, we also have 2, as well as 3 and 4, then 6, and of course 12. This makes everything so much easier. Like in decimal, 10 divided by 3 is 0.3333, repeating on forever, which is a mess. Whereas in dozenal, it's 0.4. No repeating digits or anything. And so this makes things like division so much easier. Not to mention its patterns for counting. Like, let's look at counting things in decimal. 1s and 2s is pretty easy, but let's look at, say, 3s. So in decimal you would go 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. Not exactly easy to memorize. I mean, there's no easily recognizable pattern to follow. But let's look at Dosno. We have 3, 6, 9, 1 do, 1 do 3, 1 do 6, 1 do 9, 2 do, and then you just keep repeating that same pattern over and over. Don't believe me that this is useful? Remember the horror of memorizing multiplication tables in school? Let's look at a multiplication table in dozenal. Now the multiplication table in decimal can be a nightmare to memorize. I never did fully memorize it, at all actually. But in dozenal, it's very easy. We get these really nice patterns. One is pretty obvious. In two, we have two, four, six, eight, deck, do repeating. Then three, we get a nice three, six, nine, zero, three, six, nine, zero pattern. With four, we get a clean four, eight, zero, four, eight, zero. Then in six, we get something similar to what five does in decimal, where we get six, zero, six, zero, six, zero. Then for 8, we get 8, 4, 0, 8, 4, 0. We even get patterns in 9 with 9, 3, 6, 0, 9, 3, 6, 0. And DEC, we get a long pattern, but still a pattern nevertheless counting down by 2s. DEC, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0, DEC, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. And then we get a nice countdown in L. L, DEC, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And then we, of course, get a pattern in DO as well, which is pretty self-explanatory. So Dosnal not only makes division easier and counting, but also multiplication. In fact, you may not have realized that we already live in a world dictated by 12s. Don't believe me? Check your clock that's in 12 hours, or your 12-month calendar. Have you ever gone to the grocery store and gotten a dozen of eggs? Or a 12-pack of Pepsi? Or a 6-pack of beer? Which is, of course, half of 12. I mean, when was the last time you got 10 of anything at the grocery store? Oh, and if you live in America, you still measure things by 12 inches and 3 feet. Okay, well it's good at division, multiplication, counting, but what about things like addition or subtraction? If it's supposed to make everyday math easier, wouldn't it be hard to reteach kids basic math? To which I say, when was the last time that you wrote out a math problem on paper to solve it? I mean seriously. But regardless, the same rules still apply. Like here, let's add two dozenal numbers together using the same way that we add in decimal. Okay, so we start by adding the first column, which is dec and seven, so dec plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is one, do, five, so you write the five, carry the one. Now we add up the second column, which is L plus two, and then plus one, which is one, do, two, so you write the two, carry the one, there's nothing there, so it drops down. And there you go. It's the same system, which works in any base, actually. And so naturally, it works in base 12 as well. 
Okay, fine, the super number 12 is great and all, but we only have 10 fingers. How are we supposed to count in base 12 with only 10 fingers? Doesn't that impair its everyday usefulness? Well, yes, we do have eight fingers and two thumbs. However, you can count the segments of your fingers, which we have 12 of. In fact, would you believe me if I told you I can count all the way up to 1728, which is uh, do gross in base 12, only using my two hands? Well, it's easy. You just start counting up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, deck el do, and then when you get to do, you go to your right hand and you put your thumb on the corresponding segment for one do, and then you keep going. One do one, one do two, one do three, one do four, one do five, one do six, seven, eight, nine, one do deck, one do l, and then you get to do again, and then you get two do. And then you keep going up to three do, and then up to four do, five do, six, seven, eight, nine, deck do, l do. And then at L do, you count up L1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, L do deck, L do L, and then you get one gross. And so to represent one gross, you put your thumb on your index finger, and then on your middle finger for two gross, then three gross, four gross, five gross on the middle of your hand, and then six gross with your thumb tucked in. Okay, so here's an example. We're at two gross, we're counting up, we're at two gross deck do, then we're at two gross l do, and once we get to two gross l do l, we get up to three gross. Now so far in this example, I've only showed you how to count up to six gross, but to get up to seven gross, what you do is you put your thumb back on your index finger and then you flip your hand over and then you count your knuckles for your 12. And then you just repeat the process on your right hand until you get to eight gross. And now you simply just move your thumb up your fingers like you did before, but keeping your hand upside down all the way up to do gross. And there you go. Now another cool thing about counting on your hands this way is that you don't have to count in your head as you're counting on your hands. You can simply just go up in the same pattern and then, whoop, oh, that's how many I had. Okay, that's great and all, but we'd have to relearn how to use numbers. Like, I know what 100 is, but if 100 was 144, it would be so hard to estimate things. Now this is a valid argument, sort of, to which I will still prove to you that this is not nearly as big of a deal as you may think. Okay, so here are a bunch of dots. Oh, and now they're gone. Now, don't cheat by pausing and going back, please, but try to guess how many there were. Just guess. 30, 40, 50? Have an answer? Well, what if I told you the correct answer is 30? Hooray! Congratulations to everyone who just guessed 30. Okay, let's move on with- oh, wait, sorry, my mistake. I meant to say 3 do. There were 36, decimally speaking. Now, let me ask you this. Is this a big deal? I mean, we are already horrible at contemplating numbers. Like, think about the number 74. You know 74, right? Except you don't, you silly liar. You're not actually visualizing 74 dots or 74 of anything. The best your brain is probably doing is thinking of seven groups of 10 plus four. And in Dosnal, you do the same. So getting used to how much value numbers have is not really that big of a deal considering we are already garbage at it. Like, when was the last time you correctly guessed how many marbles were in the jar, right? Okay, fine. Base 12 is greater than 10 in every way. But why would we switch? It would be such a pain, and I mean, we've always done it this way. Ah, yes, we've always done it this way. Also known as argumentum ad antiquitatum, I think that's how you pronounce it anyways, or appeal to tradition, aka one of the logical fallacies, and also the same argument people in 1700 used, but we've always had kings, or in 1800, but we've always had slaves, or even in 2014, but marriage has always been between only a man and a woman. Isn't it funny how that argument never seems to work out in the long run? I guess that's why it's called a logical fallacy, isn't it? So yeah, the logistics of switching base systems and changing the way we count is not going to be easy, and it will probably take a very long time. No change ever happened overnight. But even though the logistics are crazy, that's not a reason within itself to not do the right thing. I mean, imagine if we already counted in base 12, okay? And then I came up to you and said, Hey, I have this great idea for a number system with less factors that relates to almost no part of our daily life. Let's count in tens, everybody! You would think that I was absolutely nuts. So come on, let's start counting in does and ditch the deck. 